<clears throat> Good morning. You are listening to National Real Estate Auction Radio. I am your host, Doug Dennison, and we are broadcasting from beautiful St. Augustine, Florida, the nation's oldest city at WFOY 1240 AM Studios. Through the power of the Internet, this program is being streamed worldwide on 1240news.com. The show will also be archived on rawauctions.com as they are the host of this program. Additionally, the show will be posted on YouTube.com. We're going to be talking about real estate auctions, past auctions, upcoming auctions, different real estate markets across the country. We've got a lot of topics today. We're going to be hearing from Miami, Florida. We're going to be hearing from uh, Georgia. Um, interesting. Got some very powerful guests today uh, talking about the real estate market in in not only... Uh, the Miami, Florida area, but uh, actually nationally. We'll get their perspective. This show is uh, every Friday from 10 to 11 uh, Eastern, Eastern Standard Time. And our mission statement is to provide an educational experience for listeners in a promotional format for auctions across the country. We've been talking lately about government auctions, have been up to Washington, D.C. Uh, several times in the last oh, five or six months, talking to congressmen, talking to uh, uh, people who are really, uh, they, they know exactly what they're doing in regards to government surplus properties. However, they haven't heard about the auction process, so that's that's not the uh, the the thing to do. Um, we are uh, really going to be stressing auctions throughout the uh, the show. We're going to be stressing government auctions. We're going to be talking about the fact that uh, um, the RTC, the Resolution Trust Corporation, did a great deal of auctions when there was a crisis and we've got another crisis and and it's the most fair and the most equitable equitable way to uh to do uh, large scale of properties throughout the country uh, it's very transparent and when you're thinking about doing something for the government you always want to be very transparent we've got our first caller good morning you're on the air Morning, Jay Masterman. Hey, Jay, how are you doing, sir? Doug, how are you? Well, good. You know, I I always start the show saying that it's uh, it's a beautiful day here in St. Augustine, Florida, and actually it's kind of wet and and windy. What's what's happening down in uh, the Miami, Florida area? It's rainy and cloudy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess we probably need it. We've we've needed some rain for a while, and and we do have sunshine. Uh, uh, pretty much uh, 350 days out of the year, so I guess we're kind of greedy. Tell us uh, a little bit about uh, what you do and where you're from and your background, Jay. Sure. Well, I grew up in the New England area, down to Miami area for many years, 30-plus years. Uh, real estate background, Doug, as you know, I was 20 years with C.B. Richard Ellis. I uh, there as a vice chairman and are currently a partner in a firm called Michelson Real Estate Partners. We have offices currently in Miami, Jacksonville, and Tampa, and we are actively managing and acquiring apartment communities. Well, again, um, you and I worked together uh, many years ago when you were at CB, and we did some very, very successful auctions. That's how we became friends, and I guess that's uh, a 20-plus year friendship, which is which is always nice. Uh, I have been up to Washington, D.C. several times in the last uh, oh, six or seven months. They've got government surplus properties that they need to sell, and, of course, I'm, I'm trying to do the auction process. Tell us a little bit about our experience and what we did. Um, and and it's, auctions aren't for all the time. You guys do a great great uh, service as uh, real estate brokers and but when there's a large amount of properties and some that are kind of unique auction process works yeah um, you know Doug the auction process uh, and, and the way you guys have always done it is, is reach out to as 
many people as you can pro- possibly touch. A to make sure they know about the opportunity, and then B, uh, you know, just have have an open you know bid process. Um, I would see that as essential for government properties um, because it you know with with anything to do with the government always has to be completely arm's length. Yes. You know, there were always uh, a lot of precautionary measures built in so that, you know, nobody could uh, sneak in on a contactor connection and, you know, try and pull a property, a completely, um, you know, um, clean process. Well, Um, transparency is extremely important uh, in in a government property, obviously. That's correct. And, and, you know, look, I, I know when you say they have a lot of properties that people probably think to themselves, I wonder what they are. You know, they're, they're anywhere from a 10,000 square foot lot in Oklahoma to a, uh, you know, to a, to a post office in New York City. Um, y- yes. And, and so it's, a, it, it's really varied, but what happens is, is that, uh, you know, the, the values uh, will get realized because, you know, when people will, you know, when it's a quality property, people are going to pay up. As you know, the difficulty is some of the properties that people don't want, and how you actually, uh, you know, someone bids a dollar and actually gets a property. Um, you know, so there's all there's opportunities in that process also. There's always bargains, uh, and, and of course, auctions is the lure of the bargain. And and again, we've done many of them in the uh, in the South Florida area with you when you were with CB. Um, one thing I, before I forget, you're from New England. Where are you from, New England? Well, I lived in Boston for many years, and I also spent a lot of time in a little small town called Marblehead, Massachusetts. Well, I was born in Greenfield, Massachusetts, uh, which is in the west side of uh, Massachusetts on 91, and graduated from Springfield College in Massachusetts. And one of my first jobs was. Uh, uh, a branch director for the the uh, Boston Y, so I know your area pretty well. That's, that's pretty well. Just in Fitchburg last weekend, actually. Is that so, right? Yes, I was. <laughs> well, you know, I always said that 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 New England and the the Northeast area has a great connection with Florida, and, and yes. that that properties are being sold and and traded and acquired um, both ways. Oh. Yeah, it, absolutely, Doug. And that, you know, and historically, that was a you know the New Yorkers buying here. But you know, what's interesting about South Florida in particular is that it's very international. Yes, um, we have South American, uh, you know, investors, uh, uh, you know, Central America, uh, Europe, um, Russia, a lot of big Russian contingency now up in Sunny Isles. Um, so it's it's uh, you know pretty much completely international, and really as a result. Uh, pricing is uh, it's pretty it's pretty it's a pretty frothy market out there right now. Well, you guys have had a a, a tough uh, uh, row for a while. I'm going to say four or five years. Uh, the the market was not good, and real estate people need to know how to make money in good markets and bad markets. And it has just turned around uh, uh, from what I've heard. Uh, big time down down in the South Florida area. Yeah, completely. Well, it, you know, South Florida has always been pretty tight uh, in terms of markets. Uh, you know, there, you know, Orlando and then Jacksonville probably mainly, um, and then Tampa. You know, we're down pretty significantly, and then they've you know have all pretty much bounced back and are on the way back. South Florida dips a little bit, um, and it just but remains strong. And uh, so, you know, for multifamily, for example, it's. Uh, it, it's uh, it, it's at a sort of epic proportions right now in terms of the aggressiveness of buyers um, and try to try and compete for you know unfortunately you know whether it's auctions are being brokered is you know virtually impossible mm-hmm. pricing is 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 going way through you know normal convention uh, how is financing is is uh, financing available for these kind of properties? Yeah, there's a lot of financing right now for multifamily, uh, and even for other product types. But you know, you're, you're seeing a little more for retail and for offices. A lot of bridge financing. Um, there's a, well, multifamily obviously has Fannie and Freddie, uh, which are the uh, stall. You know, you can finance for three and a half percent right now on a seven-year, you know, two years interest only. I mean, it, it's outstanding financing. 
Well, that, that's uh, that's great. Let's get back to the government properties for just a second. Um, again, you you've been in commercial real estate um, for uh, I'm going to say 20 plus years. We don't we don't want to uh, completely give away our old, age. Okay. <laughs> but uh, uh, one of the things that I don't think people understand is that properties devalue. Uh, when they are not being uh, utilized in in the, in the area where we're talking about, and I've talked to you about this before. There's 14,000 government surplus properties, and again, everything from uh, a lot in Oklahoma to uh, one of the stories I always uh, bring up is the the post office in Washington D.C. and if you've ever been to Washington, D.C., these these properties, they go for blocks almost. They're, they're, they're so large. And anyway, this post office has been vacant for 10 years. And every year, this property costs the government $6 million to maintain. And that's $60 million that the taxpayers have already paid for. And so what I'm trying to do is, is get your perspective on um, the cost of a property that is not being used. Yeah, I mean, you know, and that's, you know, with the government, you, you have to really look into it and see, you know, kind of why they're holding it. I mean, a lot, it could be, in a way, although it's an inanimate object, you know, sentimental value, um, or it could be just future use for government use. Sometimes they, you know, they just want a, something of that prime and with that much, uh, um, uh, you know, with that much land area and so forth in, in D.C., you know, could be greatly utilized down the road for the government. So who knows what their actual decision is, you know, for that. But a lot of the other surplus properties that they're carrying, um, land, for example, um, you know, it, it, there's a cost to carry. Now, I, I assume the government doesn't pay taxes on their own land. No, they okay. don't. No, they don't. So, see, they, that's one of the big costs. So they have to have insurance, but the government is, uh, you know, it's a uh, sovereign nation. So I'm sure they're worried about insurance, <laughs> slip and fall type stuff. Um, and then, uh, so, you know, it may not be as great to carry, Doug, really, as, as uh, it seems. It's just it's unutilized, and then when we're looking for revenue right now, Certainly, could be a good time to to you know figure out what pieces of real estate, notwithstanding the D.C. Post Office, um, that that really are surplus, and that uh, you know really there's no feasible usage, you know, in the future for some of these, um, and so it would be great to monetize some of those deals. So, you know, as you know, it, it you know you really have to look into you know at each piece individually to, to try and determine value. Well, there's uh, again, there's there's just uh, President Obama had brought up uh, uh, in his State of the Union, and and then followed up with the State of uh, the Budget Address uh, last year, just saying there's 14,000 properties that these properties could be sold, uh, save billions of dollars worth of uh, taxpayers' money, and so it is a double dip, just like you you said, you you want to bring in money for the budget and we're of course hurting on the budget side but also it doesn't make any sense to keep on paying for an asset that that you're not utilizing and and one of the things that that I'd like to discuss with you is if there was a property that is in a uh, commercial area and 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 it's not being used and it's vacant, usually it's not being cared for as well. So what that means is the area properties become devalued too because if there, if that property was ongoing, if there was traffic there, if there was goods and services purchased there, wouldn't the rest of the area benefit too? And then if it's not being used, yeah, the the property suffer. Absolutely, and uh, and it costs a lot to maintain uh, deteriorating properties. It does. Um, so there's not only the liability of it, but just um, the fact that you know to try and uh, 
Well, and that's why in a lot of cases some of these older buildings are just knocked down, Doug, right? And it yes. It ends up being land, and then the land just sits there. So, no, I, I think there's probably tremendous opportunities to uh, to regentrify some of these areas where some of these properties are located that have been held off the market. Um, I think that, you know, development is actually starting to make a comeback a little bit now, especially housing, affordable housing, always opportunities for that. So if these... Uh, these are in the lower income areas. There's probably great opportunities for, for housing, workforce housing, um, and uh, you, know, you sort of go from there. So, I mean, there's no question, um, Doug, that, um, you know, again, you know, this has this is, should be, from the government's perspective, an ongoing process to evaluate these properties and to, to you know, to have sort of staggered auctions mm-hmm. uh, on, on and that's probably the best way to do it. I mean, I'm not, I don't even think you, you guess you could list the property, but really with the government to probably just keep it as transparent as possible is, is to use the auction process. Um, and then, you know, people that are interested that, you know, where it has value, they're not going to want anyone else to outbid them. So the, that's where I think the, uh, you know, the water rises to the value, if you will. Well, I'm also hoping and pushing when I'm up there and talking to congressmen and senators and, and government agencies is that uh, first first of all a bill has been passed in the house uh, HR 1734 Congressman Denham from California uh, has got it passed and and now uh, a different version of it is in the Senate um, uh, from Senator Warner and Senator Brown it, they're a little bit different but this, the whole thing is should be a no-brainer, and that is, okay, we've got government surplus properties. Uh, we're not using them. We don't have plans for them. Let's sell them, bring that money in, and also let's, let's stop the, the taxpayer cost because it's ongoing every year um, uh, to maintain. But um, one of the things we're talking about, that, that property that's not being utilized, once it's sold – and goes to a a private firm, they they start basically their own community development uh, uh, because what they're doing is they're providing goods and services, hiring new people, and now they're paying taxes, and that helps the municipalities. And and as you know, the municipalities are not doing so well either. Yes, it, Doug. It all feeds on. You know, it's a uh, you know, it's a, it's a um, uh, you know, leveraging exercise to uh, to continue to to you know to sort of get you know revenue back in the system um, on every front. So, you know, you were an advocate of that. I am an advocate, and, and many others that are in the business, we get that. And um, I think as as these things move forward, Doug, this this it will it will be a very positive outcome. And I'm hoping um, that that the government won't say, "Okay, we got fourteen thousand properties to sell. Uh, let's do a thousand properties here. We'll we'll give this to this group, and they'll sell it, and this group, and they'll buy it." And uh, that doesn't help the 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 property owners that have sat and watched a vacant property for years interested in buying it um, they're not going to get a chance if it's if it's sold in portfolio so i'm hoping that it also is sold individually where uh, area small time investors can get involved and and be part of the uh, the game. Tell us more about uh, your firm. What's your plan? You're requ- you're acquiring multifamily. Is that it? Yeah, we're acqu- acquiring and renovating multifamily um, um, primarily at this time around the state of Florida. We're also looking up in the D.C. Um, Virginia area. Um, we like the jobs up there with, with the government. Uh, pretty pretty much for constant flow, although certainly changes with administrations. In Florida, we like just because it's been down for a number of years and it's making its come back, and obviously it's, it's been coming back and continues to. And we look for, um, you know, rehab uh, opportunities here, but, you know, value-add opportunistic, some of the buzzwords that are typically used, um, as well as uh, more stabilized assets for different inv- investor base that we service 
Well, you are one of the top real estate people in South Florida uh, and always have been. Uh, again, you were a vice chairman of the CBD, uh, CB firm down there. Um, tell us how people get a, get a hold of you. Sure. The best way is probably via email, jay at michelson, M-I-C-H-A-E-L-S-O-N, R-E-P dot com. R-E-P stands for Real Estate Partners. So it's jay at michelson, R-E-P dot com. Mm-hmm. And, or um, you can Google Michelson, michelson Real Estate Partners and you'll come up with our website. Well, very good. Jay, thank you so much. And again, I always... Uh, have fond memories of the, I think we sold probably $50 million worth of property together uh, uh, down in the, the South Florida area, the Miami and the Keys and, and commercial uh, ventures for the government, FDIC, RTC, and I want to thank you for that. You have a wonderful weekend, and hopefully the sun will come out soon. Doug, thank you. Always it's a pleasure to be on your show. Thanks for having me, and uh, thanks for advocating for the government to uh, to raise money and pay down the deficit. Uh, we could use a little bit of that, huh? Yes. <laughs> Take care, Jay. Be well. Bye-bye. All right. That was Jay Masterman. He's president and COO of Michelson Real Estate Partners in Miami, Florida, uh, he has been one of the top real estate people, whether he is selling properties or acquiring pe- uh, properties in the Miami, South Florida area for years and years. And I think our first deal we did together with him was a apartment building uh, early 1990s that was hit by a hurricane uh, and, and the RTC needed our help to sell it and he and his partner did a fantastic job in representing the government the rtc is the resolution trust corporation we were pleased to work with him to get that sold Uh, we did what was called a sealed bid auction and that uh, sealed bid auction basically brought bids in and then the top three or five i can't remember which which one it was, were able to get into a live auction. And so you had to put your best foot forward. And after we had uh, the the top three or five, we ended up having a live auction and brought in another 700000 if my memory serves, uh, serves correctly. Uh, Jay was an extreme... Um, extremely important part of that whole process because he talked to the buyers he knew the lingo he knew the area he knew the uh comparables and did a fantastic job again that's jay masterman president and coo of michelson real estate partners in miami florida we are going to take a break we've got uh more people are going to be calling in, more about the Miami area, more residential. Um, then we're going to hear about some upcoming auctions in, uh, in the southeast. Uh, pretty exciting stuff. Thank you for listening. We're going to do some ads right now, and then we'll be back. All right. We are back. You're listening to National Real Estate Auction Radio. I am your host, Doug Dennison. We broadcast every Friday live from beautiful St. Augustine, Florida. Just had Jay Masserman on, President and CEO of Michelson Real Estate Partners in Miami, Florida. Talked a a lot about uh, the market down there, what they're doing, government surplus properties. Uh, We work together on several auctions. And and one of the things that uh, I want to make it very clear Uh, to the broker real estate community is that auctions and auctioneers work with real estate professionals and that real estate professionals can make money with real estate auctions. Uh, This is how they can do it. Number one, they can register buyers for an auction. Most auctions have participating commissions so that if they bring a buyer that buys and sells, it is... uh, 
um, is to their advantage. They'll get paid. Referrals, local auction headquarters, or buying at auction. There's a whole bunch of ways that brokers can uh, can uh, make money through auctions. We have a new caller. Good morning. You're on the air. Hey, Doug. Richard Swartlow. How are you? Richard. Well, it's been a while, my friend. Uh, you've been on the show before. Tell us uh, what you do and in, in your background, if you would. Sure. Um, well, well, thanks for having me again. I think it's probably been six months or so, and I've been following the show, and great job for putting the word out about what you're doing and well, thank you. business in general. Thank you. Um, you know, I, I got into the Internet business uh, many years ago. My, my background is a corporate attorney, and in about 2006, we decided that real estate was moving to the web, and the past couple of years, we've accumulated and we've developed a portfolio of leading real estate websites. The first was Hondo.com, the second was Houses.com, and most recently in November we acquired and launched Property.com. So Property.com is our newest site. It will have, in addition to residential, it will also have commercial property, and we see a need to um, sort of continue to liquidate those assets through these web portals. Well, then then you are uh, the man I should be speaking to because... Uh uh, I was just on the phone with uh, Jay Masserman, who we talked about government surplus properties and commercial properties. We're talking about warehouses. Uh, we're talking about office buildings. And with your new website, uh, uh, that would be a, a great way to get the word out. Uh, should should the bill get passed, um, it's passed in the uh, House uh, it's in the Senate now. It's a different version. I'm just hoping that uh, the Senate will will get involved and and pass it too for the ben- benefit of the American taxpayer. Yeah, I mean it's challenging working with with the federal government. Yes, we've been we've had an agreement in place with uh, Freddie Mac to assist with the liquidation of all of the residential assets for you know a year now. And even though everyone's well intentioned, there's just a lot of bureaucracy and there's just uh, it, it seems like it's slow going trying to get uh, decisions made and, and actually programs implemented, even though it's, it's a benefit for the taxpayer and, and for uh, the housing market in general. You said you were a attorney. Um, uh, you're are you always been from Miami? No, I'm, I'm a New Yorker. Came down here in 1990. Practiced law with uh, what was then the largest firm in town, which was Greenberg. Oregon and Miami. Yes. It's since become a uh, really a global law firm. You know, when I started, they, they only had a Miami office. Um, actually, I'm, I said I was a corporate lawyer, you know, for ease, but I'm, but I'm really a public finance lawyer. I, I did a lot of bond work, um, you know, a little bit of corporate work associated with that, but primarily in the public finance space. Um, and they got to the web very early, and um, you know, we're still early in terms of what's happening in the web. Um, so we have made a bet that owning the Category domains, condo.com, houses.com, and property.com, uh, based upon the way the search engines view from a traffic perspective, mm-hmm. having the exact match domain. Um, that's sort of the, the business that we built is we're in the traffic, we aggregate property from around the world, including auction property from a variety of partners that feed us their inventory, and then we generate leads. So every month we probably generate, uh, we're over 50,000 leads per month now from, uh, you know, literally traffic from around the world. Um, so to the extent any of your listeners are in the auction business and they've got inventory, we've got you know, very cost-effective programs that we either work on a per lead, a per click, a flat fee advertising. I mean, all, we sit at the sort of top of the ecosystem where we've got the traffic and we want to help others that have inventory market their inventory. Well, my firm, uh, and again, as you know, I I just joined uh, about a year ago, uh, is a member of MarkNet Alliance, which MarkNet Alliance is a group of uh, 50 different auction firms. And so maybe I can get the the two of you together to discuss uh, mutual benefit. But uh, uh, that's that's a a wonderful thing. Let's talk about Condo.com first, because that must have been a vision for you, uh, to decide to go out and do this, give me some numbers. Uh, who who goes online? What kind of uh, sure. work and all that okay. kind of good stuff? Yes. Yeah, so, so today we're we're at about uh, two million visitors each month. You know, we, we grew it 
literally from no traffic, and now we've got 2 million visitors a month. We've got close to 40 million properties globally in the database. Um, and, you know, people are going to Google and they're typing in condos for sale in a zip code or in a city or a building name or you know, a variety of different uh, search parameters, and they end up at the site. Um, typically, the non-sponsored search results get clicked on about six times more than the sponsored results. So by having the organic traffic or, or what's considered natural traffic, um, that's much better than being able to, you know, when, when you pay for traffic, consumers and others have sort of gotten smart to it and they realize that if they click on the links at the top on the side of the uh, search results, mm -hmm. that those are paid and anybody can be there. Um, the key is to have a site that shows relevant um, results when someone does a search, whether it's on Google or Bing. And, um, we see Bing uh, increasingly growing their market share through the partnership with Yahoo and, and just through them sort of continuing to optimize their search engine. So it's, you know, it's, Google's not really the only game in town anymore. There, there are other you know, uh, search engines that are driving traffic. And, and increasingly we'll see social media uh, traffic as well. Well, uh, the... The thing about, and you're located in Miami, but you're doing properties throughout the country, and actually I remember something where you were doing some uh, condominium sales uh, in Europe and in other places. Tell me about that. Yeah, yeah so, so it's a, you know, because of the web, it's really a global business. Uh -huh. So you know, we, we have inventory from all over the world. Even though we're based in Miami, our, you know, we have a technical team that's around the world. We have a lot of developers in Eastern Europe and um, other places. So we just are physically located here, but the business is global in nature. We have, like I said, 40 million individual properties that get viewed by people from around the world, and we generate leads for um, either brokers or auctioneers or developers or end users, sellers, literally anywhere, you know, in about 70 countries around the world where we're taking property feeds. Wow. That's that's incredible. Well, one of the things that I find uh, amazing is that, just like you said, it's a global economy. It's a global real estate world. I mean, I was selling some property up in Maine, and the amount of uh, – it, it, was, it was a motel, and it was up in Maine. And we had hits and in, in views from – like 47 states and another 15 different countries and that just was unheard of 10, 15 years ago. Yeah, of course. It used to be, you know, you've been in the auction business for a while, so you remember it was all ballroom and now you can be anywhere and you can I mean, expand your audience of potential buyers. Were you successful? Was it a web-based auction or were you just marketing on the web to ultimately do a ballroom? Uh, it was both. We, we did both. Uh, we were successful. We did sell the property and uh, got a reference letter, all that kind of good stuff. You know I love those reference letters. And, uh, of course. <laughs> and uh, yes, but it was, again, amazing that you would get so much interest for that type of property throughout the world. And Yeah, and, and you know, it's your... You've expanded the potential audience of buyers immediately, you know, overnight by putting it online. And any time you have an asset like that, just shoot me an email, and I'll, you know, make sure we put it on the sites and, and you know, provide you as much marketing as we can for it. Great, great. I appreciate that. Now, tell me, I mean, you you are constantly building uh, Richard's empire, and again, yeah, it's well, <laughs> condo dot com, houses dot com, property dot com. Um, yeah. Is there anything else in your your visionary mind that you're looking forward? What are the trends going to be? What are your predictions yep. for the future? Yep. So we have what we think are in, in the real estate space the, the best domains and the best. They're more than domains. There are actual marketplaces with inventory and we route leads. So we, we we're set in terms of the expansion in the real estate space. We most recently acquired Location.com, mm -hmm. and Location.com is our newest venture, and we picture almost Google for location. Everything is location-based these days, and mm -hmm. everything is location, uh, all search is location-based. So 
if you enter and picture it as a search engine, you enter any physical street address or a metro or city or a zip, we will then, we've, we've aggregated or indexed millions of data sets so that based on a location that's input, we will show you the real estate, the jobs, the singles, all the deals, the uh, reviews, anything, everything that's out on the web now has a geo point that is being geotagged associated to a location. So we're actually going and building a search engine that ties you know, all these different data sets back to a location. And, and we think that using the name location.com, um, we'll be able to grow organic traffic. And um, it makes a lot of sense. And, and we're um, very excited about that as an opportunity. Well, I have met uh, one of your top people there, Matt. Uh, sure. Very, very intelligent. And I know as an attorney, you're intelligent too, but it's from from law to uh, technical, computer, internet, that's quite a stretch. How did you do that? Yeah. You know, when I started out in this business, we, we really looked at it as a, we were in the marketing business. Mm -hmm. But pretty quickly, I found that it's really, we're in the technology platform building business and um, you just need to have very strong people and I've got a great team and uh, Matt who's our COO he's been with us from day one and um, you know it, it's it's tough because as you get older you lose a little bit of touch with everything that's new in terms of social media and sort of the latest and greatest stuff and so you, you know Matt's good but I'll tell you my 15 year old son <laughs> really provides the most intel for me, you know, why aren't you doing this, and how come you're not doing that, and so, you know, I got to hear it from my 15-year-old, you know, that something? To the, uh, the usability, and it, it's funny, but it's so true, it's happening so fast, and, you know, most recently, we brought on a very good CTO and a CIO, and, um, you know, having, and I've said it in other businesses that I've grown, you need to always spend more money for better people early on, um, and, you know, it's tough sometimes when you bootstrap to grow, but the key is to surround yourself with sort of the and 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 your son is one of them. That's that's just a yeah, wonderful thing. Yeah, he's thing. definitely one of them. I'm, I'm, <laughs> if I look to him. I'm trying to get him in here. He's got a lot too many other job offers from uh, you know, the likes of fifteen. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, give us some predictions, if you will, on the real estate market, and, and of course that's sure. global and that's uh, yep. uh, national. But where do you see it going? We we uh, obviously um, South Florida had took a hit for four or five, maybe six years, and is is pretty strong right now, unless you tell me differently. Uh, where do you uh, see other different locations that are either really weak or really strong? You know, you know in, in general, because rates, you know, and yesterday they dropped the 15-year uh, fixed mortgage down to like under 3%. I mean, rates will continue to stay at sort of historical lows, so I think there's um, buy side demand, and I don't think we're gonna. I think we're gonna sort of move along at sort of where we are right now for the next year, or eighteen months, mm -hmm. until you get a little bit more confidence. But I, I think the market generally, at least from talking to all the brokers to whom we provide leads and um, speaking to some of the financial institutions that we do business with, there's getting to be a little bit more confidence in the housing market you know, nationwide. Um, I, I, I see New York still being strong. Miami, because of the South American yep. you know, flight capital, is strong. Markets like Charlotte, um, where the you know, standard of living is very good, you know, is, are very strong. Um, you know, I mean, I think there's still some softness in sub, you know, parts of Arizona and Vegas and, and Reno, um, where there's just so much overbuilding and there's not enough of a... Um, you know, immigration into those states to make up for it. But, you know, I think in general the prices have come down so low and the rates are still very low that there continues to be uh, you know, demand. Uh, India, the BRIC countries of sort of Brazil, Russia, India, China, where there's so much uh, growth and the relative percentage of household debt is tiny compared to what it is in the U.S., mm -hmm. um, and there's a growing middle class, particularly in uh, Brazil, and, you know, India, to a certain extent, there is unbelievable housing 
opportunity. And uh, a lot of developers in the U.S. Are, are sort of looking at the BRIC countries and saying, wow, here, here's growing markets, growing middle class, a um, lot less debt. Let's develop in those countries, whether it's residential or even retail in certain instances. So. Well, excellent. Uh, you are the man as far as the websites and in real estate. Uh, very impressed with your staff and, and give my best to Matt. How can people Thank contact you. you to to sign up for uh, sure. your services? Um, you know, if anyone wants to discuss getting their inventory on the sites, um, rich, R-I-C-H, at condo.com. Happy to take any and all inventory and uh, you know, promote it to our you know, 2 million visitors every month. So you know, we're up at around 65, 70,000 visitors a day on the website, real end users looking for real estate. So you know, we've got a, a massive audience and would love to find um, you know, some partners that want to get that exposure. Very good. Rich at condo.com. Rich at condo.com. Thank you so much, Rich. Uh, it's great to uh, Always with a pleasure you. talking to you. Good luck. Let's uh, continue to talk offline to the extent I can help you, uh, you know, market any of your assets. Well, it's, uh, our, our friendship continues. Uh, boy, it's been 10-plus uh, years, I think. You take yep. care, my friend. Thank you. Bye-bye now. All right. That was Rich Swerdlow. CEO of Condo.com. He's down in Miami, Florida, but he's also the CEO of Houses.com, uh, Property.com, and he just talked about the fact that uh, he's got a new website called Location.com, and just a, a brilliant mind that uh, is a visionary, and he did this, uh, I think he said he started this, this thing about six, uh, eight years ago. And uh, just a just an amazing amount of people that he attracts to his websites. Uh, he said two million people go to condo dot com every month. That's just a, a wonderful attraction. What a marketing tool! So again, to contact him, it's rich at condo dot com. Uh, thank you, uh, Richard Swerdlow, for for calling in. Um, I'd like to take a quick. Uh, a quick pause here, and we will be right back. Mark Net Alliance is a national, membership-based network of 41 auction companies. Our companies are successful auction professionals with proven track records and thriving businesses. The MarkNet companies have a staff of over 540 employees who are working hard every day to meet the goals of their clients during our ever-changing economy. MarkNet companies are able to achieve these goals through cutting-edge technologies and ever-growing investor pools. To view the hundreds of auctions currently being conducted, or for more information, visit MarkNetAlliance.com. All right, we're back. Uh, again, we've had two wonderful interviews both from Florida, both from the Miami area. First, it was Jay Masterman, who's president and COO of Michelson Real Estate Partners. He's in the commercial area. Um, just, uh, just an outstanding guy to know if you're looking for uh, properties in the South Florida area. And also, he is acquiring uh, multi-housing apartment buildings and so uh he's the he's the one to contact down there and we just had richard swerdlow who's ceo of condo.com and other websites in the real estate uh venue uh, good people both vips pleased to have them on our, our sponsor is Raul auctions they are a national real estate auction firm that started in 1936 they do online auctions on-site auctions and ballroom auctions they have offices in Florida, New Jersey, California, Georgia, and have alliances with auctioneers and real estate brokers across the country. They do government auctions, bank auctions, bankruptcy auctions, and much more. They've got a big auction schedule coming up, so check out their website at rowlauctions.com, or you can call them at 800-323-8388. That's 800-323-8388. Uh, you can ask for me, Doug Dennison. Uh, I'd be glad to uh, talk about auctions and help you in any way I can. We were just about getting into how real estate brokers work with 
auction firms and um, the second call came in so I didn't actually get a chance to finish this but uh, how can real estate professionals make money with real estate auctions number one you register your buyers for an auction if they buy and they close you're going to get a percentage a commission um, based on that particular auction the other thing is if you're a real estate broker there's sometimes that people are going to say hey I need to sell this for whatever reason uh, because of uh, uh, whatever reason there's there's hundreds of them but I need to sell it and I need to sell it quickly can you uh, come up with an auction firm that uh, you believe in well we'd like to be the one that you believe in and again that's uh, that's Doug Dennison call raw auctions at 800-323-8388 um, so if you do give us an auction referral we are going to uh, give you help as far as a referral fee and so if we do a deal when we make money then you're going to get a percentage as a referral another thing is sometimes we have hundreds of properties at one time and we need a auction headquarters that uh, is going to be in that area that can assist us provide credibility in the area the know-how the really all the comparables knows the properties knows how to get through the systems knows buyers and so we hire uh, local auction headquarter brokers and they do a fantastic job we usually kind of figure out okay who's the best in the area and then talk to three or four different possibilities and then hire and and they are also paid based on a percentage and the last thing is just as one of our callers said I mean the reason why auctions are successful is you know sometimes it's a great bargain and if you are a real estate broker and know the particular area and you know the prices and you go to an auction whether it is uh, online or in a ballroom or on site and see a property that that is is worth I mean pick a number if it's uh, if it's a five hundred thousand dollar property and the bids at three hundred thousand right now um, you know you want to get in on that action and so another way to make money at auctions is to buy at auctions and so we would love to uh, assist you with that our website again is rowlauctions.com we work with auction firms across the country we work with brokers across the country um, the the first broker that uh, I talked to this morning Jay Masserman um, I'm not exactly sure of the number, but I think we sold up to $50 million worth of properties together where either he hired us or we hired him. And and because of that marriage and, and that strategy of um, uh, building the team, we were very successful for the clients. And so I want you to know that's, uh, that's the thing to do. Uh, last but not least is we were talking about government surplus properties I wanna again thank congressman Jeff Denham he has been uh, uh, really a, a leader in the fact that there's properties that the government holds that they're not doing anything with and it's costing the American taxpayer a lot of money in a time where we need to be helping the budget by maybe selling these assets off and getting them on a base where uh, local buyers could pay municipal taxes and, and help the area uh, that's the number one thing but the number two thing is the government pays a great deal of money for upkeep of these properties and when you're talking 14,000 properties as uh, President Obama did um, 
you know, that's a lot of money. We are not talking about houses. We're talking about warehouses, office buildings, and land parcels. So this has nothing to do with houses. It doesn't have anything to do with Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae. Um, so, uh, you know, just a, a great, great work by Congressman Denham. Uh, the bill has been passed over to the Senate. They are working on their own bill. Uh, let me see Senator Brown from Massachusetts and Senator Warner right now from uh, Virginia is working on a plan to help get that passed and, and working together to save the American taxpayers' money. Thank you so much for listening today. We will be back next week. Thank you.